Hey, what's going on YouTube? That's a TZ. Just bringing you guys another video. Um, as you guys know, I'm always looking for deals uh, recently, and uh, I've, I've been getting into uh, variable, variable power optics. Uh, I've been running them on my SBR. Um, last video I did on my SBR, I had a, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> I had a Bushnell 1 to 4 optic. I uh, really like that optic a lot. Um, it did have some drawbacks that I didn't really care for, but overall it was a, a really good optic. Uh, the biggest thing for me, since I'm a big guy, uh, was the eye relief on that optic. Um, and I can't remember what the eye relief is, but it was just a little too short for my liking. Um, <clears throat> so I started looking for other deals. I also wanted to improve the power on the optic. Uh, I wanted to try one to six. And so, uh, lo and behold, I found a deal on a Vortex Strike Eagle 1-6 uh, variable powered optic. Um, so I picked this up. I believe these optics have been out a little over a year now. I think they made their debut at the 2015 SHOT Show. Uh, uh, don't quote me on that, but I think that's when they uh, started talking about these. And when they hit the market, they were really hard to find because everybody was buying them up. Um, so you can find them now. They're they're uh, a really good optic, um, <clears throat> and for the price, you, it's really hard to beat. Uh, a lot of people compare this optic to the Primary Arms One to Six, and a lot of people even say they're made in the same factory. I don't know <clears throat> if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. Um, other than that, though, I'll just kind of get into some of the specs of this optic. Uh, once again, this is the Strike Eagle uh, from Vortex Optics. It has a tube size of 30 millimeters, uh, which was awesome because that fit the uh, bush nail that I had. So I was able to continue using my American Defense mount. Um, it has a length of 10 and a half inches. It has a weight of 17.6 ounces. Uh, eye relief of 3.5 inches, which I really like <clears throat> as opposed to the uh, bush nail. And like I said, I think the bush nail is like right around an inch and a half, maybe two inches, maybe. <clears throat> excuse me um the field of view at 100 yards is uh, 116.5 to 19.2 feet uh has a adjustment radiation of one half moa so it's a half moa at 100 yards at every click um 44 moa travel per rotation uh, maximum adjustment of 140 moa um also included with this was two flip caps uh, two CR2032 batteries, a microfiber lens cloth, and on the uh, reticle here, it's not going to show up in the uh, camera, but it uh, has an ARBDC, so a bullet drop compensation. Um, <clears throat> it has etched glass, which is really nice. Uh, <clears throat> it's calibrated for 556, and it also has 11 illumination settings so uh just getting into this optic once again the reason why i picked this up is because i've been getting into variable powered optics uh when people first started doing this i really was kind of set in stone on using my red dot optic uh, as you guys know i've used a lot of aim points i've had eotex i've run those and uh, it had gotten to the point where i just kind of got bored with it and i wanted to try something different so i uh went with the Bushnell. I really liked it a whole lot. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, the only downside to it was, was that, um, well, there actually there were two downsides to it. One was the eye relief and two, um, there was no illumination on that model. I still have it and I still plan on using it, using it on a different build, but, uh, I wanted something that I knew that was going to hold up and actually gave me, uh, a little bit more, uh, range and using and one to six optic was where it was at um i picked this up from amazon this was this optic was under 200 no i'm sorry under 300 bucks i think it came in right around 280 uh, so i got it for a deal uh, typically this optic runs um between 300 and 350 bucks uh, the most expensive one i've seen was 365 dollars and the cheapest one I've seen was this one right here, which came in at uh, 280. Um, <clears throat> this was a, a demo model that uh, had been uh, used on the floor, had never been shot before or anything like that, but it had been pulled out of the box at a dealer. 
was just looking to off it and uh, I got it at a great steal. So, so uh, we've already kind of gone over some of the features of this. Um, I'll show you guys real quick here, just some of the things you can uh, look for. Um, I've got the optic on here and I'm gonna see if you guys can mm -hmm. just look into it and see if it'll focus for you guys and I don't think it will. It's not gonna focus, uh, it's trying. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you can see the uh, BDC compensation and the reticle. I have it set at 8 right now. Um, there we go. Uh, you can see it at 8 right now. And what I'll do is uh, try and dial it up for you guys here so you can see it. And I'll actually turn it up so you can see the uh, reticle a little bit better. Now because of where I'm at, it's probably going to go out of focus. But uh, I'm going to go to the 1 to 6 here so you guys can see that as well and let's see if we can get it to uh, come back in so you can see that there and this is right at about the three and a half inch mark away the camera is away from the uh, reticle and just because of the uh, the focus that I have on the camera and the dialed in on the optic it's probably not going to zoom in the way I want it to but uh, overall this has really good glass uh, I'm very happy with it. Uh, I have had a chance to look at some really, really nice optics. Um, uh, I was also looking at the Vortex uh, PST optic, uh, I believe it's what it's called, and that's a one to four optic. Really, really nice optic, and I like the adjustment screws on that one better than I like on the uh, one to six. But uh, that one was a little out of my price range, and once again, it was really hard to beat this deal at. Uh, under $300 for this optic. Um, but I've also had a chance to look at the uh, the Night Force 1 to 4. Uh, I've played with the LaRue um, optics that cost over $1,000. Uh, and just really, really nice glass. And although this is not in that same ballpark, uh, you're not you're, you're going to be satisfied with it. For, for what you're paying for, uh, when you pull this optic out of the box, you get it dialed in and on your rifle, one thing you're going to notice is that it's going to hold zero. It looks good uh, looking through the tube. It picks up really good light. The etched reticle is really nice. And um, even the turrets, uh, the way they have it set up is really nice. This is another thing that I liked about the optic over the Bushnell that I had. Uh, the Bushnell optic did not have cap torts. So you could knock those off if you were running around or something like that. Or if you had a whole lot of stuff on, you could uh, uh, take that optic out of zero um, this one actually has the cap turrets and I'll try and show you guys this but uh, you can just simply unscrew the top here I'll unscrew this one and you can also unscrew this one as well this is where the battery goes um, on the other side where your windage is you have uh, your this this cap is a little bit larger and it holds a spare battery and it runs on the uh, 2032 batteries also looking at the optic here <clears throat> you can see how uh, you can dial in and lock in your zero uh, essentially you can turn the knobs now these numbers up here are I, I'll say they're free floating so you can turn them without actually adjusting your zero so you can take a screw, your fingernail will work or something like that, a screwdriver and just kind of put that in and it will uh, lock into place there. Well, it won't lock into place, but you can set your zero. So if you're, for whatever reason, need to change your zero and you need to go back, you can come back to it right here. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That's on the top there and it is also on the windage. So elevation and windage both have that lock in feature. I've got this uh, dialed in right at uh, 100 yards, um, and like I said, uh, I may have I may have or have not said it, but here at the end of the month, I'm going to be going to Woody's Gun Range here in North Carolina, and I'm going to be pushing my uh, my uh, SBR out to about 500 yards. I've also uh, with Solo Defense, we have an intermediate class coming up where we're going to be working from ranges of 100 yards out to 500 yards with um, <clears throat> all types of rifles. Uh, you've seen the SCAR SBR in the videos. Uh, we're going to have some 18-inch guns out there, maybe some 20-inch guns, 
and then we're going to be working with some Mark 18s and some 11 and a half inch SBRs. Just seeing uh, how they work out at distance. Each rifle is probably going to shoot a little different uh, with the barrels. We're also going to be using the suppressors and everything like that. So uh, when that happens, stay tuned for that. I'm going to be getting some video. I'll be doing some contour work with that, so you'll see that. Um, hopefully we can uh, get the vapor trails and all that kind of stuff in the video as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up. Um, <clears throat> we'll be at the range, uh, I want to say November 1st, and then the class is actually uh, November 22nd, I believe. Um, so if you're in the North Carolina area and you're interested in doing something like that, feel free to look us up, Solo Defense, on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, or also Solo Defense. And uh, Aaron Brumley, our uh, main instructor, he takes care of all of the uh, uh, getting you signed up and everything like that. So uh, look forward to doing that. Um, what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and put this on my SBR so you guys can see it. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys, so here you go. Um, I've got it on the rifle now. Uh, what do you guys think? Is it, is it one to six overkill on, a, on an 11 and a half inch SBR? Uh, when I initially put it on here and I felt the weight, <laughs> the first thing I thought was, yeah, this is overkill. This isn't going to look good. Uh, but once I had a chance to shoot it, it was a completely different story. Uh, this seems to be the way that a lot of people are going right now. And this has actually been going on for about a year now where people have been uh, throwing variable powered optics on there. And that kind of seems to be the wave of the future. So I always like to do my research before I just hop in and start doing stuff. And uh, I finally decided to... Uh, bite the bullet and and try it out so um <clears throat> can't i really can't wait to get out and push this optic and push this rifle uh out to some distance about the furthest i've shot on this rifle is right around 360 yards and it's just it's dead on so i'm looking at going to 400 500 maybe a little bit further with it just to see what it can do um <clears throat> so i'll go ahead and just pick up the uh, tripod here so you guys can see. Excuse me for the wiggle. Um, oh, also wanted to share with you guys these uh, mag pods. These are awesome. I love these things. Uh, really helps out when I'm sighting in my rifle. Um, because this is an 11 and a half inch gun, you don't really want to put a bipod on there. So something like a model pod that just gives you a little bit more stability over the uh, initial uh, uh, P mag, just that that corner that dents into the ground is a whole lot better. Uh, very very stable platform using these. Um, so if you're looking for something to kind of help you out with your stability in your zero or just in your overall general shooting, uh, these mag pods are awesome. I recommend them. Um, so just go over it real quick, share it with you guys. Still running the AAC Mini Four, Surefire Mini Scout Light. BCM Alpha Rail, uh, Noveski Rail Panels, <clears throat> Surefire SRO7 Switch, the new Optic BCM Bolt Carrier Group, ALG Defense Act Trigger, um, put on a BCM uh, pistol grip, and the Magpul SDR stock is still the same. So not a whole lot of changes to this, this rifle, just making some small adjustments here and there. Uh, but uh, pretty much this is my uh, workhorse. Overall, uh, this lower is a Bushmaster lower. This Bushmaster lower has somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 40,000 rounds through it. Um, so I'm very happy with it. I know, you know, some people kind of give Bushmaster a bad rap, but they, they make a decent product, and I've, I've really been, ha been happy with this lower. Um, but that's it, guys. If you have any questions or comments, Feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. Uh, stay safe. Keep your family safe. And uh, hopefully have a great start to your uh, week. I'm out.